Hey there, Nick with CC Minis here, and today we're gonna see if GW really needs to worry about 3D printing taking over the Warhammer hobby. Now to get to the bottom of this, I'm gonna build up the Sisters of Battle Combat Patrol box. And I'm gonna print one. All right, let's do this. We're gonna start by getting our first print going. Then we can build some GW Minis while that prints. Now I'm by far not a resin 3D printing expert. I'll quickly run through the print preparation process, but if you want a more detailed explanation or really want to figure out what you're doing, I recommend you go watch Battle Brothers Sam or Nate's Miniatures. I'll put a link to their channels down below. The gist of it is to open up some software called a slicer. Then find the files you want. Today I'm gonna print out some Blessed Sisters from One Page Rules. These are the sweet spot in being close enough to GW and design that they are great proxies, but not so close that I'm worried about them getting like DMCA'd and totally removed from the internet. And once you have the models you want, you just drop them right in the slicer. Hit slice, let the software do its thing for a couple minutes, save that onto a USB drive, plug that USB into the printer, and get it printing. Now, Corelli was nice enough to send this printer over to me to try out and share my thoughts on it. Nobody was changed hands or anything like that, and their only stipulation was I put the printer's name in the title of the video and put an affiliate link down in the description. But even with that link down there, I'm gonna do my best to give you my honest feeling about this printer and 3D printing as a whole. And there was a little bit of a hiccup when it first came in. When initially trying to level the printer, the thing just wouldn't move at all. Luckily, after discussing this with Creality's customer support, they asked me to open the printer up and see if anything was unplugged. And it turns out when they shipped it over, this little plug right here here got undone and it was a super easy fix just plugging it back in. For most printers now is the time that you would need to start pouring in your resin but the Hallett Mage Pro has this nifty little resin pump. All you have to do is take a bottle of resin, shake it vigorously much like you wouldn't shake a baby and add in this little hosey thingy on the back of the printer and let the pump do its thing. It even refills the printer automatically so you don't need to worry about refilling halfway through a large print. Pretty, pretty neat stuff, Creality. By the way, this is Creality's fast resin. I think it's slightly thinner, allowing the build plate to move faster and the resin to settle quicker. But I don't have any standard resins to compare it to, so I can't be sure. Anyway, this is moving now and it's gonna take a few hours to complete. So let's start building some plastic models. For infantry models, I like to find and clip out all the different parts for each model in a unit before I start to clean up all the little different pieces. I remember this process being a lot more enjoyable when I was younger, and I think I figured out why. Something has changed in the way that GW lays out their sprues in the past few years, which has become kind of frustrating. All right, so 101 is here, and 103 is over here. Why aren't these in like any sort of order at all? This makes no goddamn sense. I'm trying to work as quickly as I can, but I feel like the most time spent is just finding the next piece. Oh, did you hear that? The first batch of sisters is done printing. Let's go take care of that while the other Nick is looking for the right bits. He needs some time to cool off. All right, let me be very clear about something before we remove the print from the build plate. I'm an absolute novice at resin printing. If you're an expert or even moderately well-versed with this stuff and you see me do something wrong, please, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you in advance. The process I've been doing is putting on some gloves. You absolutely do not want to be touching the resin. Remove the build plate from the printer. Move that over to the wash and cure station. Creality also sent this over to me, the UW2 wash and cure station. From what I've heard, this thing is not at all necessary, but it's pretty sweet having a dedicated unit. It's got this big old plasticky tub, which I filled up with isopropyl alcohol. Now, I always expected that resin would be the smelliest part of the process, but I was wrong. It's actually the alcohol. That could be because the Hallett Mage Pro comes with a dope little carbon air filter thingy and a hose that you can vent out the stinky printer air through. Getting the prints off the plate is surprisingly difficult. I get that they have to have like a good grip to offset any sort of suction force while printing, but man, sometimes it feels like you need a hammer and a chisel to get these things off. There's just gotta be a better way. And if you know one, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks. With the prints plopped freshly into the tank of ISO, we can start to wash them. And with the cure station, it's as simple as pressing a button and a little magnetic fan on the bottom starts to turn and churn all the liquid around. While these get nice and washed up, let's head back over to the desk and work more on those plastic models. All right, I got all the bits sorted out for a unit, and now I need to scrape some mold lines and start the assembly. 
I like to scrape all the parts for a single mini, assemble it, then start on the next one. And this is a very relaxing and rewarding process that pairs well with a nice audiobook or podcast. It's great to spend some time with the models and think about how I want to paint them once I get to that stage. Models really start to feel like my own at this point. There's a strange connection that forms when building plastic minis, and I think that's kind of lost on minis that you print. All the infantry in the Sisters of Battle Combat Patrol box took me about three hours, or a little less than eight minutes per mini to build on average, which is about the time that it took me to print out that first batch of Sisters, which just finished being washed. Now we gotta take off those weird looking supports. Before doing this myself, I always expected this to be a bit of a hassle. With resin being so brittle, wouldn't you just be snapping arms and weapons off all the time? This turned out to not really be the case though. Over the course of the project, I only had one sword blade and one hand crack off a model, which were both easily glued back on after processing. After washing, the sports come off really easily. And the sound, oh man, the sound is just incredible. Here, listen, listen to this. It's so, so satisfying. With the supports removed, I've been pouring some more alcohol over the top to wash away any little flecks of resin that may be sticking around after removing the supports. Then I set them onto the wash and cure station spinning plate to dry. This is gonna take a while though, so it's a good time to start another print and get back to building some plastic models. For larger minis like the Penitent Engine and the Rhino, I like to go about it a bit differently. Because there are so many bits, I like to pluck, clean, and assemble one piece at a time. I'm sure this slows the process down a bit, but it means I won't have to search through a pile of plastic at the end, and the chances of losing a random tiny piece are a lot lower. These two minis were a pleasure to put together. For some reason, the mold lines weren't as bad as the ones on the infantry. It's kind of a grab bag, isn't it? Some kits have mold lines all over, and others, you barely notice them at all. By the way, I'm sweating because I have to turn my air conditioner off, or you're gonna hear it on the microphone. It's really hot in here. One thing I really like about 3D printing is you don't have to worry about mold lines at all. Just some little like nubs left over from the supports, but they're really not too bad. When the supports are gone, you barely notice them at all. These are dry enough now to cure, so let's get that started. I give the models a nice sun bath under the wash and cure station's UV light for one minute, then flip the models over, giving them another minute, and with that, they're ready for basing. I printed out some of the bases that come with the one page rules, bless sisters, and I really like them. These bases look sweet compared to a simple texture paste and only require a bit of resin, but they do have some weird, janky looking edges compared to actual plastic bases. Placing minis on resin bases is a piece of cake. Just a bit of super glue does the trick. I have noticed that resin on resin connections take a bit longer to dry than plastic to plastic or plastic to resin, with super glue at least. Nothing crazy, but something to keep in mind. A bit of super glue accelerant, or of course, baking powder, goes a long way with this stuff. This was super useful while putting together the printed tank and what I'm gonna call the counts as penitent engine. Honestly, I think this thing would work better as a paragon suit, but it's like the one mini that the Blessed Sisters line didn't have a good one-to-one -one proxy of. So, this will have to do. I used the same resin bases for some of the Plastic Sisters as well and primed a few of them up to paint. Now to really see the differences between the two, I chose a painting method that will accentuate the layer lines as much as possible. All right, you know it already, it's, it's Slap Chop. I started with a Zenithal Prime, darkish gray first, followed by a brightish gray from above. Then I used a dark black wash all over to darken the recesses even further. Once that dried overnight, I brought out some titanium white and started to dry brush the models all over. And this was the point that I thought I would catch a bunch of layer lines and prove that three models just couldn't compete with GW plastic. The black wash seeping into the recesses between the lines and the dry brush picking out the raised edges should have shown the ridges off like layers of cake in the Great British Baking Show, but they just aren't there at least not to the naked eye. If I break out a macro lens, sure, you can see all the layers on the shoulder pads, but that's really it. And comparing the GW model to the printed version side by side, man, it's hard to tell which ones are better. And I think it just comes down to which sculpts you prefer. The Blessed Sisters absolutely look incredible to me, but I also love the GW ones. So GW should be worried about 3D printing, right? Well, no. Not really. I mean, a little bit. Um, 
I don't think it's gonna be the end of GW like a lot of people think it's gonna be. Yes, 3D printing is a lot cheaper than buying plastic Warhammer kits. This combat patrol box costs $160 MSRP versus the resin I used to print only costing about 40 bucks. It took me a little more than one bottle of Creality's Fast Resin to print these off at 30 bucks a bottle. But that ignores the price of the printer completely, so I don't think it's a good comparison. For the average Warhammer player that plans to have just a single army, I don't think 3D printing is the route to go. And that is the average GW customer, and who their target audience is. They expect people to get into the hobby, spend four to seven hundred dollars on their first army, get bored of it after a year or two, and move on. And for those folk, I think missing out on that connection that you get from building your own army yourself would be a shame. It's just something that printing doesn't seem to capture. But what about us? The people who stay in the hobby for a while and want to get army after army, changing their play style, and even switching between 40k and AOS every three or four months. For folks like me, and maybe even you, yeah, resin printing is really going to change things. And I feel comfortable recommending the Hallet Mage Pro to you. Because other than that issue right at the very beginning with the, uh, the power cord, I haven't had any real problems. Well, except for one field print, but I'm pretty sure that was my fault. I, um, I forgot to re-level the print bed after I dropped it. So, that's kinda on me. Remember earlier when I said that a print of 15 sisters took about three hours to complete? Well, that was with the printer's base settings. With the adjustment of just one setting, this light off delay, changing it from eight seconds to two, each of these plates of infantry only takes a little over an hour to print which means in a day or two, you can easily print off an entire army, as long as you are around to process the prints when each one is complete, which is absolutely crazy to me. But keep in mind that print times are more based on height than anything else. A plate of infantry might take an hour and 15 minutes, but if you have a tank that's three times taller than that on the build plate, it's gonna take three times as long. Keep in mind. Now, will 3D printing totally take over my hobby? And is CC Minis gonna turn into some 3D printing channel? No. Absolutely not. I'm still super excited to crack this puppy open, and I'm still gonna slowly scratch build a whole orc army. And with the Hallet Mage Pro and resin printing in general, I'm really excited to print off more sisters of battle. Well, I bless sisters, you know. At this point, I think it's gonna be my main army in 10th edition 40k. And I have a great and also terrible idea to print and paint 200 zombies for an AOS army. It's a legal list. Stay tuned for that. I'm also excited for all the possibilities for armies and bits and models and things that I haven't even thought of yet. That's what truly excites me. If you have any interest in this printer, there's an affiliate link down in the description below. You won't have to pay any more for it, but Creality will send me a small commission. And if you're interested in seeing how you could paint up a whole army even quicker than you could build or print one, you can check out this video right here. And a huge shout out to all my wonderful patrons. Thank you guys so much for the support. You guys make it possible for me to bring you hobby content like this. Thank you. Until next time, y'all, stay healthy and take care. I'm gonna go turn the AC on. This is, uh, this is getting a little ridiculous.